Well, the decision to stay the breach of trust charge ends the ordeal for Mark Norman, but it raises lots of questions about the actions of the government, as we saw in today's question period. Let's widen that discussion with three members of Parliament. Marco Mendicino is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Infrastructure. If I'm not mistaken, a former federal prosecutor and the former Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Justice. James Bazan is the defense critic for the official opposition Conservatives. And Richard Cannings is the natural resources critic for the NDP. Uh, he joins us uh, as well tonight. Good to see you all, gentlemen. Peter. Thanks Peter. for being here. Uh, Mr. Mendicino, let me start with you. Mark Norman talked today about the alarming and protracted bias at the highest levels of government involved in his case. Do you believe your government treated Mark Norman fairly? Yes, I do, and I would echo the statements made by his lawyer, Marie Hennan, who said that there were no political considerations or interference in this matter, and I think today... Uh, to, well, uh, to, be clear what she, to be clear, what she said was there was no political interference in laying the charges by the RCMP and none in staying the charges today by the Office of the Public Prosecutor. And, and went on to conclude that uh, the administration of justice is unassailable. And I think that that is an important bottom line for Canadians. Now, I know the Conservatives are going to try to politicize this. We've seen them bring motions onto the floor of the House of Commons. And they go a lot further than Mary Hennan or the Director of Public Prosecutions uh, in characterizing this case as having been politically interfered with. Canadians uh, will not uh, take those words over the words of the Director of Public Prosecutions and but, a very experienced she also, defense lawyer. She did point out that it was the government's decision to call in the RCMP to look into the leak. Uh, they, she also pointed out the government... Uh, side uh, chose to withhold documents that could, could have been helpful early on to the defense and the prosecution for that matter. Why was it so important to withhold those documents rather than turn them over to the defense and prosecution in a timely fashion? Well, having worked on criminal prosecutions, uh, you know, you can't just simply release documents without vetting them very carefully for the purposes of safeguarding national security and solicitor client privilege. And you can't on the one hand say that you want to uphold the rule of law and then disregard those uh, principles. So there uh, was uh, thousands of documents, there were thousands of documents which were disclosed to Vice Admiral Norman in the course of this trial. And indeed, there was uh, a very careful attention to uh, the vetting process, which is what you would expect. And I would just say, listen very carefully to the opposition. They're the ones uh, who are politicizing this trial, as they have done in many other instances. All right, Mr. Bazan, uh, Mr. Norman's lawyer, Marie uh, uh, Henn, spoke at length today about uh, her concerns of the involvement of the government in this case. What concerns you, about, uh, you, concerns you rather about the government's actions? First of all, let's just say that I think most Canadians and especially uh, Vice Admiral Norman are grateful that this ordeal is over uh, because of this attack on him and his family by, by Justin Trudeau and the Liberals. Uh, his name has been drugged through the mud and uh, his reputation uh, has taken a hit. So it's great to see that uh, today he was found innocent by having all charges dropped. You're always well, innocent uh, in this to, country. To clear, you're, you're, you're innocent in this country uh, until yeah, yeah, hang on, just to be, prove, uh, prove I'll, guilty. I'll on, he wasn't proven to be guilty. No, no, just to be clear on, on the legal process, and Mr. Mendicino knows more than I do, certainly, but my understanding is the charges have been stayed, which means that the government uh, or, or the prosecution side would have a year, in effect, to bring the charges back if they find new evidence. So he's not completely out of the woods. Well, the, the, the judge at the end of the, 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 the short, free short trial this morning, the judge actually said, said uh, you're a free man, you're, you're, you're good to go. Okay. So, so you know, she, she, she declared him uh, innocent. Uh, so I, I think that's the, 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 the nomenclature I would use based upon what the justice uh, said in the courtroom. But let's get back to, to the case here. Exactly. Yeah. You got to remember that this all started because at the very first cabinet meeting that the Liberals had, uh, there was a leak on the Davy ship building contract. And because of that leak, uh, Justin Trudeau went out there to find a scapegoat and he picked Mark Norman. And then before charges were laid, he twice publicly said, and this is political interference all the way, that charges were going to be laid against Vice Admiral Mark Norman. That's the type of political interference that Canadians are really concerned about. And okay. then if you looked at, at, at the presser today that, that was done with uh, Marie Hennan, she actually talked at length about how they were not getting documents. They still aren't getting documents that they requested six months right. ago. That documents still appeared yesterday and that they were heavily redacted. And we will, okay, so, so we will have lots. So that's an of justice and that's political okay, interference we'll have lots by the more government. We'll have lots more for our viewers on that news conference, I should point out, coming up in just a little bit. Mr. Canning's your leader. Mr. Singh called for an independent and inquiry into this case, uh, he asked for that today, uh, into what happened. What do we need to know from an inquiry? Well, this whole issue has been a three-ring circus from the start, from the procurement process that the Conservatives bungled and then the Liberals looked into, and, you know, the, the Navy needed a ship, and then the, the Liberals stepped into the mess and made it worse. 
And then we had the whole uh, legal proceedings uh, where Vice Admiral Norman has had his uh, reputation uh, dis destroyed, basically. And, you know, the time, the stress, the effect on his family, you know, all of this is just... Canadians deserve to know the truth in this, and that's why we're but what, calling so for an, an inquiry to do what? To find out uh, what, what, who the players were, the role of the government. What, what, what an, what's the biggest answer we need here? Well, we need to, we need to know what the whether there was political interference in the, the, the into the justice system. We've seen that with the SNC Lavalin case. Canadians want to know what went on there. We need an investigation to find the answers to this. It's just another okay. example of the Liberals, you know, croning up to their friends in, in the big companies and picking winners and losers. All right, Mr. Mendicino, uh, the government has now agreed to pay Vice Admiral Norman's legal fees, although there will be a negotiation to get about how much that is, I guess. He wants his job back. Today, the Chief of the Defence Staff says he'll be meeting with Mark Norman soon about his return to work. No mention of whether he'll get his old job back and he hasn't ruled out a civil suit against the government. What do you believe Mr. Norman deserves as restitution for all of this, if anything? Well, it's certainly not for me to uh, insinuate myself into the dialogue which will occur between Vice Admiral Norman and the Department of National Defense. I am aware that he uh, has since been uh, or will be compensated uh, for uh, his defense legal fees, which I think is in keeping with our, our, our policies. Mm -hmm. And I'm aware that uh, there have been some calls uh, for, for his reinstatement into a position at the Department of National Defense. Uh, those are discussions which are going to continue to unfold. But I think that... D does he deserve an apology? Well, look, um, there are, the more important, I think, principle to, to understand is, is that prosecutions uh, have outcomes. And in this particular case, there was a stay of the prosecution, which was decided by the DPP uh, to the delegated prosecutor. And at every single critical juncture in this matter, from the investigation to the laying of the charges to today's outcome, those decisions are independent of, gov uh, of the government. Fair, fair enough. But today, the uh, I, I mean, let me, let me move to you, uh, Mr. Bazan. Today, the chief of the defense staff said, uh, he'll be meeting with, uh, with uh, Vice Admiral Norman to see about a return uh, to work. And he also uh, said he's been missed, that Mr. Norman's been missed. So does that suggest that uh, we've been through a process here that never should have happened? They, they, they're looking to welcome him back. I think the military has missed him and they do want him back. They believe that he's been treated unfairly. Uh, so I do hope to see him reinstated. You know, it's interesting to note that it was... Uh, uh, you know, government bureaucrats that originally said that um, Mark Norman didn't deserve to have any legal assistance and they uh, through this prosecution process and the <clears throat> Liberal government keeping their charges up against Mark Norman, they almost drove him into bankruptcy. So he deserves more than just having his legal fees paid for here, especially after his, his reputation has been tar tarnished. So they need to find out how they can properly compensate him as well as reinstate as well as apologize for what they've put him and his family through right. this incredible ordeal. Mr. Cannings, what, is, uh, Mr., uh, what does Vice Admiral Norman deserve uh, by way of uh, perhaps compensation or restitution after all of this? Well, I think, you know, he deserves to be made whole in some way. It's, it's not up to me to decide, you know, how much compensation that is or, you know, he, if he can be reinstated into a a proper position within the Canadian Armed Forces, I think that would be a first step. Uh, but any other proceedings, I think, you know, are up to what he decides he, he deserves and, and can ask the government for. But as I say, what we really need is an investigation to get to the, the bottom of this, find out why, you know, the Liberals have lost a couple of MPs over this. Andrew Leslie's not going to run again. Scott Bryson has already resigned. People are associating uh, those actions with this affair, and we need to find out the truth. Right. Mr. Mr. Mendicino, let's finish on this. And Mr. Bazan, is there a connection between uh, the departures of Mr. Bryson and uh, uh, General Leslie and deciding not to run again, who is also prepared to testify uh, for uh, Vice Admiral Norman uh, for the defense team? No, and I think the Conservatives' attempt to try and draw that linkage is, not, is based on complete uh, falsehoods and, and, and conjecture. And it's another example of how there has been a pattern of politicizing affairs which are before the courts. And if, again, once again, I mean, if the Conservatives want to say we should be upholding the rule of law, then we should respect the independence of those proceedings. And I think it...
precisely requires them not to be putting in uh, that kind of speculative uh, commentary uh, on a day like this when uh, justice was meted out. All right, Mr. Mazan. And, and I'll, I'll Mr. Mazan, go ahead, final word to you. And I'll just, just say this. If it, it, a picture speaks a thousand words. Andrew Leslie was there to greet uh, Vice Admiral Mark Norman uh, at, at the uh, officer's mess and gave him a big hug. Uh, here's a guy that was about to, to uh, you know, turn against his own caucus colleagues to support the Vice Admiral who needs uh, that type of, of character, uh, witnesses and people to stand with him. Um, the Liberals weren't doing it, so I'm really proud of, of Andrew Leslie to step out and actually get the job done. Uh, and, and no, that, that, you know, Andrew was there, you weren't, and Andrew gave him a nice okay, big gentlemen, hug. So and, and Mr. Vice Admiral uh, Mark Norman says he has a story to tell and he plans to tell it over the next I'm few days. I think everybody wants to know uh, also the big question is what is the piece of evidence that the federal prosecutors saw that finally decided that they didn't have a case anymore against Mark Norman. So lots of questions still to answer. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks Peter. Peter. Take care.